Hi, this is Ethan with Beta Theory, and today we're looking at the Dell Precision 5530 workstation laptop. This device is a 15.6 inch screen and a 14 inch chassis, very similar physically to the XPS 15. On the keyboard, we have <clears throat> keyboard tray. We've got a 10 keyless layout, uh, fingerprint sensor within the power button. We've got a rear hinge, no no drop down below the table level. It does not fold flat. Got a carbon fiber, what they call carbon fiber reinforced plastic deck lid. Uh, we've got a chiclet style keyboard, but it's it's quite comfortable to type on. We've got a, a, a standard Dell uh, trackpad, which you're all probably very familiar with. On the top, it is this is onyx, or they call onyx, but it's also a brush silver. It's aluminum top and bottom. Uh, on the sides, we've got, uh, left side, we've got the headphone, microphone jack, Thunderbolt 3, HDMI, full-size HDMI, Type-A USB 3, and a small, note, a small round Dell uh, power adapter socket. Right side, SD card, reader, uh, another Type-A USB, uh, battery uh, level check, and then we've got a Kensington lock. So this device is primarily uh, designed for um, 3D rendering, for um, uh, video editing, for high-end workstation loads. What we found is that there's a significant compromise depending on the CPU you, you order. Uh, this is the 6-core i7-8850H. It's available with, like I said, an i9 and Xeon. We found that for bursty loads, uh, there is no thermal throttling, but for uh, long loads, uh, there can be some uh, thermal throttling. Uh, our performance numbers kind of bore that out. Uh, right now, or at the first run on Cinebench, we were seeing something in the neighborhood of 1120, which is pretty good for a laptop. Uh, but subsequent runs would throttle. We would see the score slowly start to uh, uh, ramp down. Um, PC Mark, we saw a score of 4247. Uh, Geekbench Multicore, we saw a score of 20,254. 20, Firestrike with the built-in uh, NVIDIA Quadro P2000, which is a big selling point for this laptop, uh, we saw 6016, which is quite good for a laptop, or a non-gaming laptop with a Quadro GPU. Uh, Crystal Disk Mark, this is a Class 40 uh, SSD, one terabyte built in. Uh, we saw 2300, around 2300 for both read and write. Um, one of the things about the hard drive that they really need to pay attention to when you configure a Dell Precision laptop is that there are compromises made for this thin and light. In addition to the, to the uh, thermal throttling we're seeing, if you choose two hard drives, the second hard drive is a two and a half inch uh, form factor. If you choose the two and a half inch form factor, it will be installed somewhere in the chassis right about here, uh, and it will reduce your battery. Uh, you'll go from 97 to 56 watt hours. Uh, that's a significant reduction. Now, as it stands with a 4K touchscreen, only available in 4K, uh, there's a 1080p option, uh, and a 97 watt hour battery, we were seeing eight hours of use uh, in normal workday use. We're talking about uh, browsing the web, email, uh, Microsoft Word, and Office, that sort of thing. Uh, we're seeing eight hours of, of battery life. Um, 56 watt hours will significantly reduce that. I mean, we're talking about a significant reduction of battery capacity, so I, don't, I doubt you'd be able to make it through a full day uh, with the 56 watt hour. Uh, it is available, like I said, with uh, multiple options in SSDs. You can get up to three terabytes of SSDs in here. However, we'd recommend you you increase the size of the NVMe and don't offer or don't uh, take the two and a half inch uh, SSD option. It just it just isn't worth the compromise. That said. Um, the the CPU and the performance increases over the 5520 uh, were significant. So this is the the eighth gen. The seventh gen uh, CPUs came in the 5520 chassis. Uh, we were not seeing uh, anywhere near the battery life uh, with the same exact battery uh, from the 5520 to the 5530. So there's significant performance increases and battery life improvements between the seventh and eighth gen. Uh, eighth gen CPUs from Intel are also available the vPro option which does change your wireless card options as well if you if you choose vPro you must stick with the Intel wireless adapters uh, the Thunderbolt inclusion is very nice we're happy that it's here uh, I'm just slightly dissatisfied that they didn't include two um, the 7000 series uh, precision chassis from Dell is including two 
on the right hand side and that's because their docking solution requires the two of them. It actually sends power over the dock. In this one, if you use a USB-C or a Thunderbolt docking station with, with this device, you will have to also power the laptop. So you plug in two cables versus one. It's not a huge compromise, particularly with the issues we've had with the, uh, the, two, the dual Thunderbolt docking stations from Dell. Um, the, we talked about battery life, talked about performance, fan noise. So Dell has a piece of software called Power Manager. We highly recommend that you use that. It's really good at tuning the fans. Uh, we never found the fans, even under load, were really that uh, loud and distracting. But if you want the best possible for performance from both battery life perspective to a cooling perspective, that Dell Power Manager software is really critical. Now, battery life will be impacted by your screen choice. We found that the 4K screen affected battery life tremendously. You get about an hour less battery with a 4K touchscreen. 1080p is available, but 1080p does not have a touchscreen. The, there is no Windows uh, Hello option, no IR camera option for, for uh, logging in. Biometrics are, re are reduced simply to the fingerprint sensor within the power button. However, depending on your Windows 10 flavor, it works well. Linux is also available on here. Uh, you can get it straight from Dell with Ubuntu Linux, which is uh, useful. You can even get it with the Windows Workstation um, uh, version of Windows 10. Dell uh, also gives you an option of a P1000 or a P2000 graphics card from NVIDIA. These are both Quadro cards. They're uh, uh, very high performance for workstation loads. Not a gaming card. Uh, this is not a gaming laptop, and the price bears that out. This is a mid-level to high-level uh, configuration. So it's an i7, not an i9, not a Xeon. It does have 32 gigabytes of RAM. It does have the higher-end uh, graphics card, the P2000, and it also has the 4K touchscreen. But this configuration is probably a very common one ordered uh, by, by businesses looking for a high-level, uh, best-value workstation laptop. But that said, this configuration is well over $3,000, approaching 30, well, almost, almost 3200 quite honestly, which is a very expensive laptop. But what you're getting for that money is um, a very good compromise, a sub-5-pound, 4.3-4.4-pound laptop that outperforms or approaches the performance level of some of the seven and eight pound laptops in the 15.6 inch size. So overall, uh, I've been using this laptop for about two months, uh, maybe three months now. Um, I've been using it every single day. I found that it is more than enough for my workloads. It is capable of everything I've thrown at it. Its battery life has been phenomenal. I've actually flown across country watching movies on this and had no battery problems at all. Was able to watch six hours of movies on an airplane. Perfectly fine. Um, it's a great compromise laptop. It's very portable. Uh, for those uh, business users who might need uh, high-level graphics or high-end uh, uh, CPU power um, in a thin and light design. This is Ethan with Beta Theory, and I hope you enjoyed this review. If you did, please click the like button or thumbs up. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.